for me, um, I just want to thank um, the crew uh, and all the black polos um, with Fusion Sport for, I guess, what I've found this morning really engaging. Um, so thank you for finding the balance between um, tech and information and humans and people. Um, it's something that, for me, when I sort of received the message um, to contribute, come and speak here, um, the reply I sent back was, uh, look, if it's about the information, the tech, the numbers, dashboard building, I've got an outstanding sports scientist who will be great to present at that, but if you want someone to talk a little bit more about uh, people, that's where I sit and that, that's more my skill set and experience. So um, I, know, I know there's a, a real mix uh, in the room here today, those of us that work further towards the information side, further towards the people side, um, but we all work with a little bit of both. Um, so my... Uh, chat today is more around that interaction of how we try and bring those two things together, the information that we work with. Um, human performance is the human side. All the information we get comes from humans and are the humans that we're trying to help in the first place. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to listen to some athletes as well. Um, it's, as we just said, we can listen to our athletes a whole lot more and a whole lot more often. Um, it's very easy to sit in our bubble um, and think that we can come up with the best possible plan um, but the more we listen to what our athletes are seeing and feeling and experiencing, the more we can actually do what we're here for, um, which is creating moments of joy and success for the people that we're here to work for um, each day, which is, is our athletes. Um, and other, other people in the centre of the circle. Um, so when we're talking about the practical use of numbers, the practical use of data, data, whichever way you want to say it, um, information um, that we either can or can't measure, see or can't see, um, the key part for my role is that um, I actually found it noted on the front of the book that's sitting in front of all of us, um, driving human performance. So that, that, to frame up where my role sits um, with our group is I lead our performance team. Our performance team, we have our, our nutritionist, dietitian, our sports scientist, our strength and conditioning coaches and our mental skills uh, programme. And if I was driving that as a performance vehicle, um, again, it comes back to the humans that we work with. So on a day-to-day -day basis, what we work with that information is the players and the coaches. That's what we're here for. That's who we're here to support. That's who we're here to help be successful. Um, so we get our information from the players to make our decisions, and we've got to hang with our coaches because they drive, they drive the vehicle. They're driving the performance. So I sit... Um, as my role is in between the two. Strength and conditioning background, that was where I studied more. Um, I work a lot less now with numbers um, and programs and a lot more just with people. Um, the interactions of the different parts of our program. So if we were driving that performance vehicle, uh, my role essentially, I know I've got our sports scientist, he's looking at the speedometer, the odometer, he's, he's glancing at those numbers to give us the information. Our nutritionist, dietitians looking at the fuel tank. Um, our strength and conditioning coach, he's putting the foot on the pedal or the accelerator, he's changing gears, um, and I'm, I'm steering. I'm just giving us direction, and our coaches are looking out the windscreen, and they make decisions based on what they see in front of them. Um, and we can present them some of the information that we bring through to help guide those decisions, um, but if our coach wants to turn left, we can either say, we're going too fast to turn left, we need more fuel, but if they want to turn left, then we've just got to figure out a way to turn left. <laughs> and that's, that's a reality, and that's, that's the reality that we, that we do work with and gathering the information and how we use it. Um, we've got to stick with our coaches and we've got to be facilitating the performance of our players. So we can present that information to help make a, a, a different decision if we need to, but again, the alignment, the integration becomes critical, and again, that all just comes down to people. Um, again, we, we go right back to, to our sport. I'll just play sort of a short video. It's not just about blah, 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 Crusaders, um, so don't worry. Um, but I just want to draw things out of um, the people in our organisation and, and what they say about what we do and then how we can educate them around how we do it better. So I'll sort of play little clips as we go um, as a bit of an audit around how we, how we run our environment and how we can do it better. All of humanity loves a contest. One of the things the Crusaders stands for is leaving everything out on the pitch. Rugby's our spiritual guide, really. It's a lot of who we are, um, so we live and breathe it, and everyone has their part to play. Legend has it that a bloke picked up a round soccer ball and ran with it, and, and rugby was born. People come to watch the Crusaders play, and 
But if they know that we care by the way we play, and they'll come along, they'll support it. So out of that, um, we had a real focus uh, with our, our whole organisation last year around bringing everybody into the circle. Um, so the two, the two voices there, um, our former CEO, uh, Hamish Riak, um, and our head coach currently, Scott Robertson, um, and just knowing that their, their understanding, the key three things that we sort of pulled out, which is essentially it was like a marketing video around a sponsorship or a partnership um, that we had with a technology company was um, the things that stuck out to get them engaged and aligned with how we used our information and really buying in and driving that forward with us was um, the contest, the first thing that, that sort of Hamish mentioned, the contest is what inspires people to come and watch, athletes to drive themselves through their sports and for Look, for those of us that weren't that good at sport but found another way to stay involved, um, we love to watch the contest um, and it's a real key driver behind everything that we do. Um, Razor at the end talked about playing like we care um, and that's the part that everybody sees. Um, but the part that we get to see behind the scenes, um, th those of us in this room that get to see how people work, is, is training and preparing like we care. Um, and that's the part that leads to actually playing like we care and getting performance in the end as well. So how do we tie into those things which are a whole lot deeper than just uh, presenting a slide and giving education um, to our players on how we use it, to our coaches on how do we use it, how do we actually dig a little bit deeper to get people really engaged um, and really aligned on the information and how we put it into place. Um, I can't go too much further, I've stitched him up a little bit with a snapshot of a video when he's halfway through talking, um, but this is Sean who is our performance scientist, he's the one I, I would have sent to talk more about numbers. Um, so I, I won't dive into too much detail, I, I think most of us in the room sort of know the exact metrics that we use aren't necessarily the key, it's how we use them, um, but if you want to dive a bit more into our systems and our, the detail of our information, he's the guy to get in touch with. Um, and, but he, he has great face time with our players, so I'm really fortunate that our, our performance scientist is also a people person and he understands the game. Um, so he doesn't just drive by the numbers, he's got a, uh, a great strength for human interaction, which means that we can utilise him directly face to face with our players and we've just heard how powerful that is to use the right language, say the right things, understand your people and listen. Um, so we give him as much access to the players as, as we possibly can and they have as much access to him. Same with our coaches, our medical department, everybody in our organisation has access to that, that space where we're collecting information to improve our performance. So if we just focus on, uh, on the players for us, um, one of the things we've really, really worked on the last couple of years within our Crusader organisation is player engagement, not just aligning them and getting buy-in. If, we, if we're trying to get buy-in, we're trying to sell them something. Um, it needs to be theirs. We all sort of understand a metaphor. Um, you care, human nature-wise, we care more deeply about something that's ours. Um, we know that, that the ownership of a house, you want to put time into your house, you want to sell it for more than what, what you bought it for, um, ideally, uh, depending on what happens in the market. But generally, people who are renting a house um, don't put as much time and effort into the upkeep of that house as those who own it. So um, for us, one of the, the critical parts for us is it's, it's their house, um, it's their data, their information, their performance, their career. Um, so for those of us at the, at the end of when information moves from one space to another, uh, if we're building a database or a system flow, we kind of need to understand these guys really need to take their information with them, and if they take it with them, they really have to understand it. Um, so I think in the, the background of, uh, of this video, uh, as an example, um, Pete Samu, who was with us, who isn't with us anymore, um, he wanted to chase a dream to play for the Wallabies. So we wanted to facilitate and help him chase that dream. Um, so for us, when he shifted across to the Brumbies, it was important for us to send as much of his information um, that could go with him as possible to help him chase that dream. Because again, we pull it right back to the fact that we're here to help these athletes achieve their dreams, live moments of joy, be successful. Um, so when we're thinking about systems and flow of information, we've got to keep remembering who actually really owns that info and where it comes from, and why are we using it. We're using it to help the person that that information came from in the first place. So the more ownership they have of that, the more that they'll put into actually utilising it to hit the goals that they're trying to achieve. So when we really dive down into it, we've, talk, we've sort of talked about the contest, it's one thing we've really identified from an organisational perspective, but also for the players. Um, 
That's why, that's why they're athletes, the thrill of the contest, whether it's, whether it's winning or whether it's just racing and just pure racing and trying to win. Um, it's a real key driver for how we utilise the information that we're measuring from those players to get them to apply themselves to train like they care and to prepare like they care. So we have to utilise competition and the thrill of the contest as much as we can when it comes to player engagement and alignment. That's one thing we've really focused on um, that we've found really rewarding uh, because we know that, that, that that's what gets them up. Um, on the other side, we talk about education. Um, we really do want to have an ongoing education. We've just heard about not just bringing somebody in for a mental skills workshop and then parking it and leaving it. How does that education actually go on and on so that we get better and better at measuring and using the information that we're collecting. Because it's all about driving the ownership um, that we've just looked into around what's actually going to drive the success of their career is how do they own that information and know that we're here to help them. Um, we're not measuring information so we can use it. They're not doing things because we tell them what to do. Uh, they're doing the things that are going to drive them forward and we're here to help that. And just a, a story on um, education which this is Two days ago, um, our dietitian, we were um, sort of cleaning out the players' lounge at our facility. He works with uh, another team that's just finished their season, and one of the players had come through for one of their individual reviews. Um, and as he was sort of unpeeling a mandarin, he asked our nutritionist, oh, have you watched that um, Game Changers on Netflix yet? <laughs> so do you think I should just go plant-based from now on? Because those athletes, like, they're all plant-based, so do you reckon that's kind of the way to go? And meanwhile, he says... Actually, this is, the per this is the first piece of fruit I've eaten all season. <laughs> so after taking a deep breath, um, our dietitian he sort of looked at it and thought, <laughs> it's been there all year. We've been educating you all year around the importance of more fruit, more veggies. Now you want to go plant-based, you've just eaten your first piece of fruit because you watched something on Netflix. Um, <clears throat> which drove to a great conversation to draw out of him what actually sort of engaged him into that. And then we sort of went and sat aside and talked about, well, let's go back and revisit how we're educating these guys, because it's obviously not sticking. We can't just stand up and give the same dry chat over and over and over, and then they don't go away and follow it. So what's actually engaging and inspiring the athletes right in front of us every day now? Um, so he very, we very quickly researched a, a slightly more... Um, a slightly different doco and said, look, how about you watch this and come back and talk about the balance between the two. Um, so and we're starting to find these ways that actually we're getting success and we've managed to, to win, but we're not nailing it. We're not nailing education because it's not sticking. So um, we're certainly not doing things perfectly and we can certainly be doing things a whole lot better. Um, so a big part of this process, I think in preparing for, for today really, was we were really fortunate as a part of one of our technology partnerships um, to assess the fact that we're trying to educate our players and, and, our, and our coaches and our staff, and is that actually working, and is it actually sticking? So one of our performance partners wanted to do some, some marketing material and some player interviews and, and do some videos, so um, we, w we wanted to structure some of those questions to actually ask them about their information and try not to prime them on how are we actually using their data and how much do they actually look at it, and we, we can present I could come here and say, this is what we do and this is how we do it, but whether it's actually working or not, we need to, to assess that by a different way. So we structured the questions in those so that A, marketing kind of got the material that they wanted, um, but B, we could sit back and say, is our education on how we use our information to improve performance and develop athletes working? Um, I really want to quickly just note on a, a concept, another one that we've touched on, um, more so in the last 12 months than before, uh, because we know we've got a large experienced group moving on uh, post-World Cup, and that's the reality of a World Cup cycle, um, and that have we been just picking the best fruit and focusing on the top of the tree, um, or have we been watering the roots, um, and what's coming through behind these players that are leaving? Are we set up for sustainable success? Are we set up to continue moving forward, or, or have we built a house on sand? Um, so it's something I'd encourage um, all of us to do, probably more often, it's something we've started doing a whole lot more often, is stepping back in whichever part of um, technology or people on that spectrum that you work in, sit back and find out where are we actually looking and where are we, where are we educating, where are we resourcing. Um, so as an example for us as Crusaders, 
when we took on that technology partnership, we, we moved away from just getting the absolute best system we possibly could for the team that's going to be playing every week, um, and we sliced that up so that we could filter back down that our two, our two Moda 10 Cup unions that feed into us, they don't have much budget, they don't have much resource. Um, the same with the academies, our players come from there, and out of the clubs and out of the schools, they've got nothing to spend and, and not a whole lot to work with. Um, but that's where all our players are coming from. That's where all our coaches are coming from too. So how do we make sure we get that balance right? Yes, we need to perform, but also we've got to be developing um, and, and watering the roots all the time, otherwise we just end up with either no fruit at the top of the tree or a dead tree or no tree, um, which means no job. So uh, for us, it's a, it's, it's a real um, a key focus for us moving forward. It's something I'd encourage as well when we're talking about where and how we use the information. Yes, performance is important, but don't forget development, especially when you get to the performance level. It's very easy to uh, forget about where we sort of came through from and where everybody else is coming from too. Um, so to get to somebody else talking, just very quickly, uh, through that interview process, we talked to some of our academy players, some of our Crusader players uh, on their interaction with their data, um, and, and then we look to pick that apart and find out how we can educate them better. So we'll see how we go. As a player, it's pretty interesting to find out how much distance you cover in training without actually realising it. Also, it's always good to compare with the other boys who's fastest. It's always good because it tells you how far you've been and what, what your load's been for the week, so the strength and conditioning coaches manage that, and I can compare my results to those in the Crusaders team at the moment. Players have been are pretty competitive in what they want to get out of out of the units. It's a new it's new to a lot of them, um, so they they look at total distance. But then the, the thing they want to see and compare against the other person is, is top speed. So top speed is always the one. Oh, how fast did you run today? And did you make a, a top speed sprint or a, a sprint distance today? And how many meters did you sprint for today? Within 10 minutes, I've got all their data um, well displayed, um, easy to read, and I can show the players as well. Um, I guess for us personally, you know, SAS, our performance trainer, gets the GPS and gets us to have a look at our meters if we're not reaching those targets. So um, for us two competitive people, we uh, tend to have a little competition to see who can run the fastest, who can run the most, and SAS is pretty good around um, trying to stop that and just get our load that we need. So, Yeah, we have a lot of interaction with our data. It's always nice to see how much further I'm running than Bryn and how much faster I'm going than him. But um, we have daily targets that we have to meet helps us keep track of how much we're doing in each session. I have quite a lot of interaction with it, uh, especially coming back from injuries or um, planning your weeks right, about uh, getting your metres right and building up slowly to so you don't get any injuries. So in assessing that, I guess some of the basics and some of the foundations are there. Um, what we drew out of that was we know that the, we know the contest is there, we know it's important to them. Um, and the question we keep asking ourselves is, Right, do we do more of that to keep inspiring and engaging them and using it? Or is that sorted and it's there naturally and we've got that right, but we need to do more education so that they've got more ownership? Um, and there is no one size fits all. Um, every different group, you'll have different people at different stages who need different variations, be inspired by more, more competition or need more education so that they don't go too far that way and, and then we've got issues to deal with as well. So. Um, and picking that apart, one of the discussions we had was um, Ferg Burke, who was the academy player um, that spoke at the very beginning, um, who, who's just come into our, our, our full contract group now this year, um, talked about comparing, so that we, we always want to kind of compare up. Um, I know working a high performance sport, you very often get um, emails and messages all the time, and what are your players running in this, and what are they hitting in the gym, and what's the, what are these performance markers, and what does an all black number eight look like? Uh, those sort of things. So, um, but it can be very dangerous because it's they're, they're different players and they're different humans and they're different people. So, um, it's picking it's picking very wisely when we use that message and when we don't. The same as when we use competition and when we don't, um, and how we educate to create that ownership. Um, so, for Ferg, he might know that the the current All Black Ten. Um, is hitting these specific metrics, but he might be a completely different player. So we do, we do understand and we need our players to understand that yes, there's certain uh, cutoffs that you need to get to to be at a certain level, but don't try and be someone else. 
um, be yourself, know yourself, and make yourself better. Um, and so that's the education process that we're looking to, to use competition to help create ownership. So that's sort of our current cycle um, to give some insight on how we're going about that process through talking to players, listening to them, drawing things out of, of, of clips like that. Um, we know the two halfbacks with Brynn and, and Drummo, they go at each other all day. Um, so competition wise, that's pretty well looked after. We don't really need to drive that because they're doing a pretty good job of it. Um, but the education side of it of how much and when and what, we can do a little bit better and we know we can do a little bit better because they're so hyper competitive already. Um, so how do we get that ownership and that competition that makes sure they're not just trying to beat each other but they're also trying to make each other and themselves better. Uh, coaches. So five very different coaches, five very different personalities. Seven minutes to lunch, here we go. Um, the how. So what I really want to discuss here because I get to bridge the gap. Our coaches absolutely have access to the rest of our staff. Um, I certainly don't sit in the middle and don't let people talk to people but uh, it, it certainly helps for us in terms of integration for, for myself to be able to act as a bit of a connector between the two um, and sometimes a translator. Um, Sean will translate numbers into pictures for me, I can translate those pictures uh, into some forms of a solution that I can work with uh, our coaches side by side to try and get to where we want to get to in a certain week, a season or a day or a year. Uh, Jace Ryan, our forwards coach up the top, um, whistle in the mouth is a perfect metaphor, he's very short in terms of the information he delivers and the information he likes to receive. So not only do we need to know our athletes, we need to know our coaches as well. Um, and if we're building dashboards and building databases, we need to know that actually people aren't going to use it or look at it or interact with it if it doesn't give them the information the way they like to receive it. So um, having that flexibility built in has been critical for us. Jace likes very short bullet points, otherwise he'd gone out the door onto the next job. So I know that I only need to give him a couple of really clear points around what he needs to know. And if I go on too long, he's looking at his watch and he's gone because he's got something else to do. Um, Razor's a little bit different. Um, great dancer, great coach. Um, very analytical, understands culture, big picture and people. Knows the game, knows his people. Um, and sets up a safe environment for, for people to excel. Razor likes information in colours and pictures and it's got to be fast and it's got to be engaging and he's on to the next idea. So if I give him a screed of information, it's not going to work. Brad, he's sort of standing in a pose that says where's the rest of the info because he's sort of the opposite, he's a details guy. Um, so knowing Brad as a coach, he likes a lot more detailed information. He wants to see the spreadsheets, he wants to see the numbers, he wants to see all the people. How do we interact with him to make sure that he gets what he needs to be the best possible coach for this group? Rog is kind of looking confused. Rog was um, outstanding in our group. He brought a whole different perspective um, in how we look at the game from an, from an outside perspective and really grew us as a group. And he grew with us in, in the the ability to utilise technology and information to actually coach and make decisions. Um, so Rog started with us in Super Rugby not even using the video software that the rest of the coaches used. Rog watched a game from start to finish and wrote in his notebook the time and the marker and he, that's how he ran his analysis was watching the game and writing it down and it still worked. But he managed to become more time efficient by learning to utilise the technology and the information a bit better so he could do more coaching by feel, which is what he can do as an international test player. Um, but I found out with Rog, uh, because he was learning of all that other, other information, if I gave him too much from the performance space, it went straight in one ear and straight out the other, because he's already learning a lot, he's already juggling a lot and he's already coaching the players, he's got a lot going on. So understanding his position really helped me know that, okay, I know with Rog, I'll prime him in the morning with something, and then at the start of the meeting, I'll remind him of it. And then out on the grass, I'll remind him again. And we'll interact on it. And then we'll keep talking through the session and keep reminding him because he coaches by feel. Um, but he likes to interact often. So Goody uh, down in the corner, who was our defence coach, is sort of quite different to Rog. He's highly planned, highly detailed. He goes out and it's, it's such a well-versed process in how he coaches. Um, that if we sit down in the morning and cover the, the key information that he needs, he just goes and, and, and nails it and he lets me know if he needs something. Um, whereas Rog will actively seek out and say, I'm going to forget, can you please remind me? 
so again, even though we're working with information, it's relationship building, it's human interaction, um, it's working with people. Um, so a bit of a test just to see uh, whether education of the, of the coaches was working really through the same process that we did before. Oh, look, as a head coach, data is really critical for me. Especially in the training loads, I work really closely with our uh, head SNC to make sure that I line up what we want to do at training and, and what the boys have had from a game or a pre-season game or pre-season training to so make it applicable for, for each week. It was a massive reason for our success last year in winning the championship was about getting our load right. So um, it's direct feedback and also it's something we can manage moving forward uh, into the season if we need to do more or less. Uh, for me it's the load management and injury management to make sure that they, they can play footy, they're footy players and um, give them every chance to stay fit and, and manage them through the season. For us, um, and, and for the other coaches, it's instant feedback. We can walk off the pitch if the guys haven't done the load they need to or the running they need to um, and impact and stuff. We can do deal with it straight away. So uh, we're maximising our time um, on field uh, so they don't have to come back and do it the next day. So it's just real, it's real life data. We just can manage it the best we can um, and best so for the So in the, the review process of that, I guess what, what we took from that um, was what our coaches were really engaging with was, you hit it probably multiple times, live data, live data, seeing what's happening, maximising our time, not having to come back later and do it. Um, so that real, being able to utilise the information in the moment is really key for coaches because they're coaching by gut feel, by what they know. Um, and quite often, as, as we know, the information lines up with our gut feel and reinforces it anyway, and sometimes it tells us uh, something different in another way that we need to consider. But knowing that that's what our, our coaches need, we need to set up how we use that information, that we can't present it a day later or two days later. We need to be interacting with it on a daily basis, live, in the moment, so that our coaches can use it to help them coach. Otherwise, we're wasting all of our time and all of our work putting these great presentations and, and sheets together that don't get seen and don't get used, um, because coaches don't have a lot of time. So they need snapshots of information or they need information in the moment. Um, so whether we're building how we interact with the coaches or whether we're building the system that prevents information, um, we've got to tailor how we deliver that to the coaches that we're working with, to the athletes that we're working with. So the actual what, um, we also, because there's not a whole lot of time to get information across, um, they're aware that they don't have to have everything and we're aware that they don't want to have everything. Um, so that I know with Jace Ryan, one thing that we need to progress and get better at with him is we've probably focused more of our metrics have been on our, our, our running metrics and our on feet and, and our sort of mechanical load um, in training, where we need to shift to a little bit more around measuring our internal load markers and finding out what's going on with our forwards and how we can shift them forward, because GPS doesn't tell you what the forwards are, are doing in terms of a running metric when they're doing scrum and line out and they're staying in one place. So we need to work better with Jace. We've identified that, that that's an area we need to shift to, so the information supports what we're trying to achieve with that group. Um, Razor, the information he needs is just is the big picture stuff um, from me, so around how the group's tracking, whether it's, uh, whether it's in, in energy or a wellness or how we're going in terms of the overall engagement with what we're doing, we can be a bit of a thermometer with that so he can drop in and out, or it's the overall season plan, when to do more of, more of something, less of something, um, or if we need to make an instant decision um, to help get a better result. Um, so if we need to make a quick shift, the boss is the one to go to. Um, Brad, I know, likes a lot of data, so he's actually probably the only one he likes to get everything, but then he likes to narrow it down, so he might say, tell me more about the two nines and when they're, what they're running on defence compared to running on attack, um, and sometimes it's about painting a picture. He might say, right, this, this halfback is better on defence because he's working more, I need to paint a picture to tell this other halfback that that's what he needs to be doing to be more effective in our defence, but not to play on that competition too much to cause a rift that they're, they're actually competing against each other, but they're trying to genuinely get better um, themselves and get each other better as well. So we can try to paint a picture with the information that allows him to tell a story that gets a shift that he needs to get. So sometimes a bit of creative licence with it too. Rog just wanted to know one thing, line speed uh, on set piece, so how quick uh, are our backs getting off the line on defence to close down space uh, and put our opposition under pressure, um, and how we relate that back to what we're doing in our 10 metres in the gym, what our acceleration metrics are on field. So he didn't need to know 
the overall loading. He didn't need to know max speed because he knows who's fast in our back line and who isn't. Um, but he wants to know how do we increase our line speed and how do we get what we're doing in the gym and in training out onto the games to put our opposition under pressure. Um, and Goody's a lot more around contact metrics. So as a defence coach, we need to make sure we get exposure in that area. Um, so again, some of the other things don't um, sit in the area that Goody needs to know all the time and doesn't want to know all the time, but we need to know the small package of information that he can choose to plan a defence session for the week in the time that he's got to meet and talk about it. Um, so I've talked a little bit around, around investment as well, around how we, we really want to make sure um, we don't end up being a house built on sand um, and how we've got our strong foundations. So for us, reinvesting back into the Māori 10 Cup unions um, that send us players and coaches, um, the academies that are, that are developing the players that come through to us, how can we help to resource and educate and drive and water the roots uh, of where those players are coming from so that when they get to us, it's a whole lot easier. Um, they know why we're using information. They know what we're measuring. Um, similar to, to Rog, who's learning, trying to learn the video analysis tool and sports science at the same time. It's, it's a lot. So the better we can educate further down the chain and the better we can not just focus on the top of the tree and, and picking the best fruit, um, even if you don't have the right budget, that's the reality. We don't all have access to all the money that we want to do all the things we want to do. Um, we can't maybe make a full concrete slab, but at least we can reinforce our foundation, top it with a little bit of sand, make sure the house doesn't fall into it somewhere in the future. Um, because we are working for the players and the coaches that we're with, but we're also working for whoever comes into our job after us. Um, and we don't want to set them up to fail because we want the organisation that we work for, whether it's a sports team, whether it's a business that's trying to go, we really want to set that up to be successful. Um, so it was a key point that I really wanted to emphasise that um, is important for us, and, and I'd encourage you to make it important for yourselves if, if it isn't already, is to keep looking back down to where everyone's coming from, and are you filtering resource, or are we standing at the top and complaining about what's coming up but not doing anything about it? 